Welcome back, everyone. Today we are discussing volume two of the A2 ASE exam preparation. Two of two. Two of two. Let's get started. First question. The pressure control solenoid connector was left unhooked following a transmission installation. Technician A says that the transmission will likely jerk when it is shifted from park to reverse. What do you think? Well, the one thing we need to understand here, obviously the name pressure control solenoid, we need to understand what happens when we energize the solenoid. Right. Okay, now... Even what is if, that pressure control solenoid for? Well, it's in the name, right? It's controlling the transmission pressure. But we need to know when I activate that, does that, is it like a spill valve? Does it decrease pressure or does it increase? Right. And you should be able to math this out, okay? I don't, you don't have to be a transmission expert to understand. Imagine if we lost power to our transmission, right? Do we want that transmission to fail? Say we have an electronically controlled transmission that loses power. Right. We want it to default to high pressure. And in fact, that's what transmissions do. When we have a transmission problem, it usually defaults to max line pressure. Now, how does it do that? It's because the solenoid, when it's de-energized, when it's off, will basically not regulate the pressure. So the pump pressure now is just gonna be whatever it is. So and we get an increase. We get an increase, which will increase the firmness of everything. Right. Every shift now is going to be Bump. rock hard. Now, that yeah. could cause some damage theoretically because there's a lot of shock, uh, but it's not going to cause, yeah, it's not going to cause our clutches and bands to burn up, which is right. going to mean, hey, we need a transmission rebuild. So what we need to know here is that these pressure control solenoids, they are bleeding pressure off as we're duty cycling them. Okay, so with that information, this should be a very easy question to answer. Right, we left unhooked. Unhooked, it's not So it's powered. not working. Mm -hmm. So the transmission pressure is gonna be way higher than desired. Right. In which case, yes, the transmission is gonna bang into every gear. Tech A is saying from park to reverse. It shouldn't matter what gear, right? It it should, just, it's just gonna be. It shouldn't matter, and we're doing that to protect the transmission. They could have made it in the opposite fashion, meaning high duty cycle would equal high pressure, but in fact, it's the opposite, okay? So best answer here? Uh, so we know that tech A is definitely gonna be correct. Tech B says that the transmission will likely jer jerk when shifted from park to drive. Well, with what Daniel like just, just said, said yeah. it doesn't matter. It's going to jerk when shifted from whatever to whatever. And we don't want any rock hard shifts. We want nice, smooth, Easy shifts. Yeah. So uh, who is correct? I'm going to go with C, both. 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 Technicians. Let's go ahead and take a look at that next question. The next question says, which gear is most likely to be selected when checking the transmission fluid level? This is a, a, a nice, easy one that I think most anybody working on cars should get. Right. Um, we've got options of A, manual low, B, reverse, C, neutral, or D, overdrive. Um, and I think many of us have probably seen transmissions that say park or neutral. They didn't give us an option for park. Um, so neutral is really our, our only option here that's yeah. viable. And it's the only one that's safe, right? If you had to put a vehicle in gear. Can you imagine and get then out, get out? Yeah, hopefully not get run requires over. Requires two people to check yeah. the transmission fluid? I don't think so. One thing about this question I just want to add really quick is that there are some question, uh, some transmissions that do want you to check them in neutral and not park. Not park, that's right. That's typically yeah. Chrysler products from back in the day. Very Little common. Chrysler. Yes, they got to be different. So look for that. You got an old 48 RE, you got an old Dakota, Dodge, whatever. Look at that dipstick. It's going to tell you to check it in neutral. And the one other thing on that is that a lot of the new transmissions want you to check them uh, cold or relatively cold. Right. Oftentimes they'll be, you know, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which sometimes it's that hot outside. Right. Um, so you have to be very careful. In fact, Nissan recently had some issues with their transmissions where their dealer techs were filling them incorrectly. They were thinking to fill them when it's warmed up and the fluid is expanded. Oh. So they were actually doing it incorrectly, and these vehicles would now be... They didn't uh, have enough fluid in them? They didn't have enough, right? See, so, wow. so Nissan had to go, hey, no, no, look at our procedure closely. It's right. saying 114 degrees Fahrenheit, right. not Celsius, right? right? So right. big, big difference there. You have to be aware of that. And that's why I say a lot of these questions are written to, uh, are you a technician actually out there doing that? Because right. if you are, you're going to know that's how we do that. Right. Right. So another easy one. All right. We love uh, the easy ones. Let's take a look at that next question. 
All right, the next question says, technician A says that a servo can be air tested to test for proper piston sealing. And before moving on, I think we got to talk about, well, what does a servo do for a transmission? Yeah, so, and, and this is another thing we go back to, maybe you work on modern transmissions and you're not hearing these, these terms anymore because, you know, older transmissions used servos right. and bands. And in that case, you know, you might, have a newer transmission that's using uh, clutches and uh, all clutches and uh, you're gonna think what the heck's this the servo well essentially the servo is just applying the band yeah okay it's a hydraulic device that applies the band which will squeeze uh, the drum a drum and stop it okay so it's an apply device and hold our ring gear of the planetary gear set right yeah it's gonna hold the, there's a drum right there's gonna be a drum that we're stopping right we're stopping an yeah. element and what are we actually you know touching with this friction uh, material. Now, could I test a hydraulic element uh, with air? Absolutely, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. See, gonna... does it move? Is it seized? Is it leaking? Is yeah. it leaking, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. And uh, that's definitely gonna be something that uh, you're gonna wanna do and uh, definitely viable. Like, uh, but the issue being, uh, do you even realize what a servo is uh, anymore, right? All right, if you don't know that the the servo does have a piston inside of it, you're you're thinking like, okay, are they are they serving me junk? Because an AC question absolutely can. They'll say, they'll use a term and then uh, talk about it incorrectly to see sure. if you know what that term is. And yeah. I think this is, you know, uh, they're, they're explaining it properly, but I have seen that where they try to trick you. Right. Um, technician B says that the servo spring causes the servo to release when pressure is released from the piston. And I mean, I say in most scenarios, a spring is going to do something like that right definitely yeah in this case yeah that that sounds very accurate to me we're gonna have a spring and when that hydraulic pressure is relieved on that uh, servo it's going to retract Push it, it right back into yes, position and allow right? that band to uh you know release the drum essentially right because if not the fluid would push it and then it never return back mm -hmm. exactly right exactly right so, so this question like we're saying there are certain things we do need to understand make and, a side note asterisk yeah servo servo right there like that, huh? Wow, that's so weird. It just appeared. Amazing. Right there. How'd you do that? You know, editing. Adobe Premiere. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at that next question, guys. All right, our last question says, referring to the figure here. <laughs> Leviosa. <gasps> right there. Wow, amazing. Amazing. Technician A says that the pattern on channel one of the oscilloscope is a good signal from a permanent magnet generator. Mm. Now, if you watched uh, some of our electrical videos where Daniel went into permanent magnet generator being a funky name for a particular type of sensor, um, a permanent magnet generator is going to generate more of an AC sine wave rather than that square wave that's showing right there. What Correct. are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is, uh, although it is a transmission test, transmissions use sensors and they're all computer controlled. So we need to have some understanding uh, of the differences between a digital type sensor and an analog sensor. Right. And the uh, permanent magnet or variable reluctance sensor is going to generate this nice AC uh, voltage, this AC sine wave. And a digital sensor, like a Hall Effect uh, sensor, will uh, produce this digital square, square, wave, square right? wave. Yeah, and oftentimes zero to five volts, or it could be zero to twelve, or whatever it is. Um, so they're just checking to see: do we know the difference uh, between the two? And right. this is an important question because if you're going to be testing these, you need to know how to test them properly. Right. If you have, you're checking a VR sensor, and you don't have your meter in AC volts, then or you have your scope incorrectly. Um, scaled, you're not going to see the right signal. And you right. might think there's a problem. So you're going to have to have an understanding of what type of sensor you're working with so you can diagnose it. So this is a very, very good question. So Tech A is saying channel one, which is on the top of our figure, is a good signal from a permanent magnet generator. But what we see is a square wave. That's a digital square wave. So he is, in fact, That's wrong. And then we can see Tech B is saying channel two, the lower one is a Hall effect, which is the opposite. These are right. flipped, right? Hall effects provide the square wave, not the AC Those sine wave. Those are digital so sensors. It looks best like answer. they're opposite. Yeah, best answer on this one's gonna be D. Neither. Neither. Yeah, all right, easy one. 
Thank you guys so much again for hanging out with us during the A2 ASC prep. And let us know in the comments what other ASCs you want to get ready for. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. See you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a beautiful time.